go ahead and get started. We've got, um, including all the panelists, we've got 44 participants on, so that's great. Um, hello, everybody. My name is Alicia Cheek, and I'm with National Career Development Association. Now, on behalf of NCDA, welcome to our webinar series. We are pleased that you have joined us. Before we get started, I want to share a little bit of information for you. Uh, during the webinar, um, the attendees' microphones will be muted. We encourage any questions be typed specifically into the Q&A section, which can be found on the lower section of your screen. Our presenters will address those questions as we go through the webinar. And if you have any other comments or conversations that you would like to add, please use the chat section for those so that we can keep those separate from our questions and make sure we get all of those answered. Individuals who have signed up for this webinar can log into their account on the NCDA website to view their CEU certificates beginning next week. Groups that are attending will need to return their sign-in sheets to me in order to receive their credits. This program is approved for one contact hour of continuing education. For any questions on continuing education, you can contact me. Uh, my email is acheek at ncda.org. My contact information was also included in your webinar instructions email. Our presenters today are members of the NCDA International Student Services Committee, and I will let all of them introduce themselves as we go. We now present holistic support for the career transition of international students returning home in the coronavirus era and beyond. Okay, thank you, Alicia, for introduction to, uh, of our the committee. Hey, how are you, everybody? Uh, my name is Oon Young Park at University of Illinois Career Center. I'm serving as a co-chair of the NCDA International Student Services Committee that is hosting today's webinar. And I'm so the glad and excited with this the timely topics you know, uh, at the last year's the webinar on how to work with the third party service providers uh, when you are working with international students. Then uh, our committee thought you know, that this home country topic would become more and more important and timely given the current Corona-19 pandemic uh, issues. So uh, let me introduce today's uh, agenda very quickly. Yeah, here's our agenda for today's the webinar. We'll start with a brief introduction to our committee and today's speakers. Then speakers will cover contextual background and factors which will play important roles in coaching international students who go to home countries' job markets. Our best practices will be shared and Q&A time will follow. So please put your questions on the Q&A box if you have uh, any questions, because the speakers spare 10 to 15 minutes for the Q&A in the end. So yeah, it's time to introduce our committee. So all are the, we are all the members of the NCDA, NCDA International Student Service Committee. The committee is made up of career development uh, professionals from across the country. The purpose of the group is to bring awareness to the needs of international students in the U.S. regarding their career development. So our work includes research, a guide for sharing best practice, and presentations such as this webinar. So if you're interested in learning more about our committee or joining our committee, please contact us at the email listed here or by going to the NCDA website or uh, by joining the, our LinkedIn group. So normally we accept new members during summer before the fall semester starts. So next slide. Yeah. Uh, before introducing today's presenters, I'd like to say big thank you to our committee's webinar team, Liz, Juan Cigar, CEO and founder of IC Away, and Gaun So, who will join Princeton University Center for Career Development next week, and Subi Arkin, a graduate student at Kent State University, who is volunteering for this project. So, all these three people are working even today behind the curtain. Uh, I'll briefly introduce today's the presenters, uh, then you can read. Uh, our the full bios on the NCDA website. As well, you can check out their LinkedIn profile too. So, Ali Palin is an assistant professor of counseling and the coordinator of the career counseling 
specialization at San Francisco State University. Sonia Liang is the associate director at Career Strategy Center of the International Business School at Brandeis University. And Sinui Rose Shu is a career service consultant with an international student focus at the, the Center for Career Opportunities at Purdue University, West Lafayette. Okay, Rose, can you start the presentation to talk about the uh, learning outcomes? Sure, thanks, Uyang. Hello, everybody. Uh, this is Rose. So uh, today, uh, thank you for joining us in this discussion about the holistic support for uh, the career transition of international students returning home. And here, uh, we want to talk, as we talk about returning home, we want to acknowledge that some students do this choice voluntarily, while some students have to make such a choice. And people in different situations may refer to you know, home country or country of oranges in different contexts. And here, we want to acknowledge that first. And for you all, as our uh, participant participating in our webinar, we have identified three learning objectives for this session. The first one is to think about uh, what motivates the international student to return to their home country, right? What about the complexity about the context and factors that contribute to this? And the second one is we want to help everybody to get familiar with some potential advantages and challenges that those international students who are returning to home country may face. And the third one is to, um, as helping professionals, you know, how can we look at from a more holistic way to identify some resources and best practices to help international students to prepare to uh, this whole process of returning to their home country. And this is a really like a learning together process. We want to in, uh, invite you to, you know, type in your questions in the Q&A and also make comments in the chat box like they mentioned earlier. So, Ellis. Hi everyone, uh, this is Elif Bolin. So we would like to start the session with an interactive live poll. Um, so while we want to acknowledge that there are so many different factors and so many different challenges students face, and then we are sure that you professionals also face in supporting students, we would like to have an idea about what could be the most pressing challenge in your perception that you observe international students facing when they plan to or have already returned to their country of origin or home country. So these are based on the literature and, and the best uh, and the practices of different professionals. So we invite you to take the poll that you will be seeing on the screen here and let us know what do you perceive as the most pressing challenge at this time. We want to give you about maybe half a minute to respond. Do you see the poll? You should be seeing the poll questions on the right corner, I believe, if you couldn't see so far. Maybe another 10 seconds or so. Okay, so maybe at this point we can close the poll and see what are some responses. Sure, I can go ahead and read those responses for you. Great. We have, let me see here. We've got, so I can see the answers. 24% uh, said A, the reverse culture shock and or social political restrictions in their home country. 6% answered B, homesickness, missing their friends and loved ones back in the U.S. 41% mm -hmm. said C, job search challenges in a different economy and job market. 
and 20% answered D, redeveloping their career network and connections. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you so much for reading those responses to us. So it sounds like very expected as we were having our discussions as a group in preparation for this webinar, we were definitely also acknowledging the, the challenge of job search in a different economy and job market. And as Unyong also said earlier, uh, especially it is very timely right now because since the 2008 economic recession, maybe even uh, more significant than that, we are facing a very uncertain, very unpredictable job market with the impact of the current pandemic. And obviously, most of us are here today as career professionals, so it makes sense that we want to learn and be perceived the job search as the most pressing challenge, and we will certainly talk about that today. But we're also glad to hear that um, some other respondents acknowledge the challenge of reverse culture shock and the impact of redeveloping career networks connections back in the home country. We, we really appreciate this recognition because today we also want to talk to you about the importance of thinking holistically about the career development of international students and why we need to really take a look into the context and help these students become more aware of what is waiting for them with the return decision before they can even focus on or make efforts in the job search. So, so with this understanding of these most important challenges, we can now move on and start talking about understanding the context better. All right, so uh, first we'll talk about uh, understanding the context, right? The complexity and factors motivating students to return to their home countries. We'll first start to look at, like, you know, before COVID-19 hit, what were some dilemmas that um, international students were facing? Uh, could you help to uh, forward the slide to the next one, Quan? Thank you. Yeah. So before COVID-19, we know for students who are studying abroad, studying in the U.S. from a different country, right? It takes them, um, it takes a lot of energy and time for them to, you know, adjust to this new learning environment. For some international students, that might include some language barrier or like, you know, learn about the social norms, learn about the cultural references. And all of this time and energy that takes up from this effort may lead them to missing the opportunity to build some home country network, professional network, compared to their peers who are studying at home. And also you may hear from this, you know, even uh, either firsthand from the students you work with or anecdotally from other people that there is limited opportunity for international students in the U.S. regarding, you know, internship and full time. And a lot of employers do have concerns about the potential visa issues that they may need to face if they hire international candidates. And this kind of situation um, limit access for international students to, uh, in, for international students to have access to internship and full-time opportunity in the U.S. Also uh, from the past recent years, I think you probably heard about this as well, that OPT application has been taking longer and longer. And we've heard stories that um, students as well as their potential employers are suffering from it because they cannot start on the date that they were supposed to start. And we know some international students are facing a lot of distress for this situation they can have very, very little control of, right? So as we're thinking about this, um, the dilemma the students are facing, even before COVID-19, we think about this process of making uh, this decision making of returning to their home country or country of origins could be very complicated, right? Balancing the pros and cons about whether they should stay or do they want to return and think about this very challenging job market for international students in the U.S. and the potential adjustment they need to face after they go back home, right? And that could be some personal reasons and sometimes other factors like, you know, economic factors, social factor, political reasons. And then uh, Elif is going to talk about the uh, new challenges opportunity in the current crisis context. Yeah, thank you, Rose, for those very important points. So, um, as we said at the very beginning with our objectives, our goal today is, if, if nothing else, to really help you to reflect on a holistic understanding, a really inclusive understanding of the factors and the context that impact international students. So, we would like to start by saying that, actually, we were already planning on this webinar a few months ago. 
um, because this was an implication and need based on our uh, committee's research and other work that we do all together for several years. Uh, it was finally time for a webinar like this, but in the middle of our preparation and discussions, this pandemic has begun. So in our meetings, as we were all trying to process the crisis going on, as you can probably maybe, maybe some of you are aware, some of us were former international students, some of us still identify as recent immigrants or international faculty members, uh, professionals in this country. So when we were discussing about everything going on, we said we have to incorporate this current crisis in this in this discussion. So we wanted to make sure that we make a direct reference to the new challenges and hopefully some opportunities also eventually with this with this current um, pandemic. So in that context, we first want to acknowledge this pandemic actually has already uh, impacted several um, international students, immigrants, um, you know, including undocumented immigrants, refugees. So with the border restrictions in place, with the visa services being suspended, um, as you hear from the news, refugee admissions, uh, you know, being on pause, all these things already impact several international students because they don't all come as one package. Um, they all struggle with so many different types of personal and systemic circumstances, and they also have different type of statuses in terms of maybe transition to being an immigrant, maybe some of them also applying for an asylum. So, so we want to acknowledge this current situation and the fact that many international students are actually already back home right now, and they are facing an enormous uncertainty uh, in terms of when or how whether they can come back for their studies. Uh, they don't know for how long more they will need to stay back home and how will they navigate their studies with the time differences, with, without access to different types of student services, maybe without access to the social support, the cultural support that they uh, immensely worked on for several years in the United States. And social media and online communications are not always you know, filling the gap these students might be facing right now with the lack of the loss of such 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 support. So we want to acknowledge these things, but we also want to acknowledge today that beyond these political issues and policy issues, unfortunately, sometimes also as a result of political messages that we see in the media, there is a significant increase in racial discrimination and even violence against uh, Asian immigrants, uh, which include international students. There are temporary immigrants, at least. And then, of course, Asian American citizens uh, face these racial discriminations and violence as well. So so, so we need to acknowledge as career professionals that um, you know, sometimes, not sometimes, actually often, if we are experiencing um, our, our students, our clients uh, facing difficulties to focus on their academics, to focus on their job search goal, uh, it may be related to their challenges in processing all these crisis situations and all this chaos, which includes, um, again, this, this racial discrimination issues that we should be discussing with them and offering support for. And then also acknowledging managing the current crisis, um, again, as a crisis, so as a chaos, and uh, what does this mean for these students? So sometimes international students may already be coming from um, countries of origin, maybe where they faced different types of traumas and crisis situations and chaos. So for some of these students, the current crisis might be very psychologically, emotionally re-triggering. Uh, it can be a secondary trauma for some of them. Uh, they will be, they are currently navigating a lot of uh, worries, not maybe just in terms of their own concerns with coming back for their studies or what will happen to their job search, what will happen to their OPT eligibility and things like that. But they also navigate worries for their loved ones and families in, in countries. Although we often hear we're all in this together type of sentiments in media. Yes, we are all in this together, but we are also impacted by this current pandemic in very, very unique ways, uh, depending on what country we are from or what country our loved ones are.
Uh, so we need we want to acknowledge these things. And one last thing to acknowledge with all of this, even more related to the current um, situation, is of course uh, a recession coming up, another economic recession, a worldwide, um, you know, unpredictability of the job market and economy is on the horizon. So what does this mean? We already see cancellation of job offers for students, and unfortunately, uh, we observe international students uh, can be the first to be cut from some such job offers because based on our research as a committee, we know many employers already perceive hiring international students as an extra hurdle for themselves, extra challenges that they assume sometimes mistakenly make assumptions about the paperwork required to hire them. So international students are currently are losing job offers. And then they have also concerns in terms of maybe they are coming from a country or they are going back to a country which was already chal challenged economically. And now that that economy, job, that job market will be even worse. Um, so in these situations, we really need to acknowledge these, these current challenges, but of course not being, you know, pessimistic. So acknowledging all these challenges, but then also helping them um, with a perspective that hopefully some opportunities will also come up from, from this challenge as people are learning to be more adaptable, as people are discovering their, their resilience and their strengths. For example, maybe some, some skills, some educational backgrounds will be even more valued with the rise of certain types of occupations and industries under this crisis. So that's why we want to talk more about strategies for holistic career development and planning so students can see this crisis, these challenges, and also opportunities um, with a more strength-based perspective. So in this sense, we need to really better understand the factors influencing their perception of the current context and their opinions and decisions. So we will continue with looking more closely into those factors. Sonia, we can continue from here. Can we move to the next slide? Thank you. As my colleagues have already discussed, um, this may not be new to you, but it's a graphic to help you to visualize like all of the factors influencing students' decision-making process. As you can see, the inner circle shows a number of factors that are related to more of the personal identity aspect. Um, the culture they come from could set a number of rules in terms of guiding individuals' behaviors and inform general decision making. For example, some cultures may place higher priorities on higher education, and there's a conformity expectations to um, follow the, your um, your to listen to your parents, right? Listen to your community's decision. Um, and students, when considering their career destination, they could also think about their current skill set and their career interests and help them to lean one way or the other. Um, as you can see, there are um, you know, definitely a lot of um, like how much uh, they're aware of the industry trends and the job market could also help them to um, understand um, whether there are opportunities in their um, career destinations Sometimes these could also be misinformation um, that related to their world of work. So that's something that we can examine further. Um, students' socioeconomic status could also determine whether they will want to pursue something that is more financially rewarding. So these are some of the internal factors. Um, if you look at the outer layer, there are a lot of pooling factors which may align and conflict with students' internal motivations. Some students may feel desperate to unite with their families and friends who are considering the U.S. to be a better place for their careers. With the recent restrictions that my colleagues was talking about, some students may have to leave reluctantly. Um, and during these days under the epidemic, some students may want to go home, but they're stuck in the U.S. because they cannot get a plane ticket to go home and are forced to look for opportunities in the U.S. temporarily. And I'm working with some um, December graduate that are facing some of these challenges right now. 
Um, so just something that you are you may also already um, seeing and especially we're approaching the summer grad season and they might be also considering all these factors when they're um, making their career plans. So these are only a handful of bubbles that I can fit onto the slides. I think my colleagues already cover a lot of grounds um, and other factors to think about would be social media inference, peer pressure, all types of unexpected events and circumstances as well. Um, as some of you who are familiar with um, the system theory framework, which examine an individual as a holistic, as a whole, and all the cultural structural factors are taken into account. This is basically an attempt to use this model to demonstrate some of the intertwining factors involved. It really requires a career practitioner to make inquiries to learn about the specific student and their rationale, while keeping in mind these factors behind could be complex and sometimes conflicting as well. I put together an inquis um, inquiry list with questions and resources, which hopefully will incorporate the understanding of individual system into some actionable steps. Um, I think Elifus is gonna talk more about these external factors, um, and then we will move on to talk about um, best practices. Thank you, Sonia. Uh, yes, we can continue with this with the slide. So, um, as, as Sonia said uh, really well, um, there are all these different uh, intersecting factors influencing students' decision making, and we really hope that bringing this systemic perspective today uh, will also be helpful for you because um, sometimes when we are trying to help uh, international students with a dilemma or decision in place about staying in U.S. for a little bit more or, you know, for a while or maybe returning to home country, uh, we might be over focused on the, the, the job related or career related factors, but we need to acknowledge the fact that nothing else is really unrelated to career these days, especially in this current world. Hopefully we are all better recognizing the importance of looking into exploring the context of multiple, multiple factors influencing our students, our students' clients' decision making. So as you saw uh, in Sonia's chart, um, image uh, one of the important ones were um you know global events and another one was global job market and another one was politics so when we look into that this the the uh, the, the, the 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 circle like the very uh, surrounding all the other factors um one important theme is the political situation and unfortunately we can it's no longer enough for us to attend the political situation just here in the United States or in the X country that um, this, let's say one student that we're working with is, is considering to go back, we really need to become a lot more aware and knowledgeable about the worldwide global political situation that's impacting all of us and, and why we consist, consistently talk about an unpredictable job market, why we are talking about a lot more job insecurity, a lot more temporary jobs, why we are talking about a lot more anxiety and mental health issues people are experiencing in relation to their work. Um, so this political situation is very important uh, because understanding the political context in each country and also in comparison to the United States and worldwide worldwide dynamics um, is, is not only related to understanding the job market, it's also related to understanding people's values, their needs, and their overall life career visioning. And sometimes, especially with international students, they might be coming from cultural backgrounds, maybe where their education system was not all about critical thinking, maybe coming from a certain type of family culture, they are just not as aware, not as educated in terms of thinking about the impact of the, 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 the social political dynamics on their lives. So um, this, is, this is not to say that we're trying to impose a certain type of worldview on them, but what we are trying to say is that it is really necessary to 
think about the political situation and explore the, the overall uh, context that might impact their life career decisions because it is an ethical issue. It's a multicultural competency issue. It's a social justice counseling competency issue for us to help our students become more aware of the, the context that impact their choices. Um, and, and that said, again, that awareness piece um, to help them make informed decisions, uh, to make them um, really knowledgeable about the potential consequences of certain types of decisions. Uh, of course, that's also related to understanding the economic instability and changes. Uh, for example, many international students might be away from their home country, country of origin for several years, and a lot has happened since then. And it can be very overwhelming for such people to follow the news and the political dynamics, the, the economy, the job market of both United States and the home country. And there might be some things that they miss. So it's very important for them to really have conversations with their career counselors and other career professionals working with them about maybe how they can, you know, empower themselves by gaining more knowledge, more understanding of the, the changes that might impact their desired career paths. Another important thing here that we need to take into consideration when we are designing our career counseling and career practice sessions, work or case conceptualizations, plan of work with these students is that we need to take into consideration the, the, the potential identity conflict, values confusion and worldview differences in the process of career planning. Um, so sometimes in the career counseling practice, we over rely on maybe some tests that are only giving us a very, a very limited glimpse of what these students' interests are and values are and skills are. Um, yes, assessments are usually some really helpful facilitators and we certainly need them to, to become you know, more aware of our, to, to get to know our student clients and to really help them maybe narrow down certain types of choices. But we also really need to gather the story. So many assessments are may not may be limited in terms of um, helping international students to acknowledge the story and acknowledge the changes in their sense of identities. Um, so, for example, in our research, we have encountered international student stories where after they come to United States, they their values might change and they might be impacted by different types of worldviews and they can eventually find themselves in some conflict. Some level of conflict with their family members or with the larger society that they now plan to go back. So they need to think about these things and what this might mean in relation to their choices of certain types of industries or workplaces or what type of networking and what type of connections that they need at this point when they again return to their home country after several years. So they need to take these into consideration as well. If you remember in the poll at the beginning, we asked you what are the most pressing challenges? So uh, we couldn't um, include all of the factors from the literature or from our professional practices, but some other ones that we need to acknowledge in here and, and why political situation might impact these things is, for example, their sense of belonging. Um, at the very beginning, um, we said under the objective, some students are going back to their home country, for some of them now home is here and they are leaving maybe their chosen families, friends, families and certain types of values behind when they are now going back to country of origin. So questioning that sense of belonging and how a career choice will maybe further challenge or maybe support that, that, that sense of belonging for them in this return. Uh, another thing is that, um, you know, what is financially rewarding or, you know, what type of challenges that they might face as a result of the political situation. That's another important thing. So, um, again, a lot of things might have changed since they left their country of origin and they may not have as much of an understanding of maybe some benefits changing or, you know, maybe some social security system changing in the country of origin. So they really need to also better understand uh, and being able to compare that economic environment and better understand the quality of life that might have changed also in, in on home country. 
Um, and on top of all these things, as we will uh, discuss more in a little bit, uh, we need to also help them with additional skills um, such as adaptability or, you know, crisis management and things like that, depending on, you know, how unpredictable, unfortunately, the political situation in the in the home country. So we will continue and talk a little bit more um, next about some of the resources and best practices um, when we take into consideration uh, helping students again navigate um, different types of factors in place uh, for their decision making again this is Unyoung, the committee chair so four speakers so i'd like to give the time notice so we have 20 minutes for your presentation please be mindful of the time okay thank you Thank you, Onyang and Liv. Um, so here it is. I promise that I will bring something um, that helps you with your practice as a practitioner. Um, so here's a checklist I put together. I use in a workshop before. I use it with individual students. The idea behind this checklist is not that we have to know every single thing and we know the answer to these questions, but it's really helpful for us to facilitate the conversation with the students when they're returning home. So the first one is important to, for students to think about and understand is the career prospects in their home country. As a student, the general employment landscape in their home country, are there any national or local level laws and policy related to employment of graduates who return from studying abroad? Any benefits or any documentation that they need to be aware of in this process? What about the trends in their particular fields? Some countries or regions may have more job vacancy than others, depending on the field. So it could vary a lot. Um, when I was talking to a labor market expert in China um, a couple of weeks ago, and he mentioned um, the luxury goods right now, um, uh, um, the industry is being very badly impacted while logistics are on the rise because people heavily dependent on deliveries these days. Um, so which is understandable but each country may have their own situations and how about the hiring needs for their particular background students may consider companies with the tie to the u.s and employment needs for multilingual abilities in terms of um, resources government and ngo websites could be very helpful resources to get these kind of information the second category of questions to ask is related to the recruiting process, which is also the most important. Um, so students are like what are, students should understand what are the general recruiting practices? What does the recruiting timeline look like? Is the student paying attention to job search platforms or resources that are tailored to candidates with the study abroad background? Last year, our committee renewed our resource guide to include um, a one-page student handout with specific job sites of different countries. Um, if you're interested in learning more about the third-party providers, you can also review our webinar um, from last year. Um, I promise I don't want to solicit any services, but here I am breaking a little bit of rules, um, but just the resources that would be helpful for you as additional information. So even though you may not be able to whip out a website for every country or region, it's okay to know that your role is to guide students through the process and let them do the research. Application documents and interviewing process are definitely very different um, in every country. Students should have a good understanding of what is expected format of resume and whether a cover letter is required or not. What are some culturally acceptable behaviors in the professional settings um, is also important to know. For example, you can say um, US employers generally prefer a candidate to be proactive, take initiatives and demonstrate assertiveness. How would it be different in your country? So simply by asking the students these type of questions could help them to reflect on their experience. And the differences between culture um, that will help them to gain more insight and confidence in preparing for a home country job search, even without the previous experience working in their home country. Um, some comprehensive career websites could be very useful to help students to navigate their search, um, to learn some tips and strategies. It's also helpful to turn to local industry experts 
and to gain some firsthand insight as well. So that brings us to the next point of talking about networking at home. Um, so sorry, it's the previous slide. Um, I was talking about the networking aspects um, in this checklist. So um, as you can see, when we talk about networking, um, often it comes up is um, the career services and alumni relation could be a good starting point because we will um, can share some resources, how students can connect with their alumni back in their home country. So it include clubs, local office, and also some uh, media, social media they can utilize. And you can also help students to brainstorm and explore the existing contacts, especially those in their career search destination. Um, this part, Rose will talk more about this in the next slide. But last but not least, I wanna talk a little bit about the travel and logistics. It is important to remind students of this category because um, it may play an important role in their next step planning. One example that I mentioned already is flies are rather limited to many countries these days due to the pandemic situation. So students should research and plan ahead and make sure they have a realistic start date in mind and travel plan in place before they make a commitment to an offer. If a student seems extra anxious about finding a job soon, um, that's usually when I would talk about finances with them. Like, do you have a place to live? Do you have some financial means to support you during this job search period? What is the realistic time that you can spend on the search? And you can also check in to see if they have any remaining obligation in the US, like paying rent, taxes, outstanding bills, and keep copies of important legal documents. These could be really useful in their future um, and circumstances may arise when embassy resources, legal services could be helpful to resolve some of the logistical issues. Um, speaking of legal matters, a side note here, as we are um, noticing a lot of career offices these days is their fraudulent um, job posting, especially for students who are dealing with this third part, um, this um, long distance and home country search, there might be some um, job posting and third party companies that target uh, this population specifically. Of course, like, you know, just like career practices might be different, these fraudulent activities may also look different from country to country. Um, the good thing to remind students about is to be mindful when a job is too good to be true, or if they have to pay a handsome fee to a third party provider, um, or a successful placement. You can encourage them to reach out to you and talk about this before they rush into a decision. So as you can see, this chart is very customizable. So you can fill in specific resources based on your student population and their country of origin, um, and also including resources from your office and from your school. You can even leave the column blank for students to fill out as a worksheet um, I used it in a workshop before, or you could give them a Likert scale to self-evaluate their readiness in terms of uh, search process. So hope this is helpful for you, and I will leave it to my colleague Rose to um, talk more about the networking aspect in the next slide. Thank you, Sonia. Thank you for sharing that very useful uh, practitioner checklist. And just echoing, uh, echoing Sonia's message, I think, and also what Elif said earlier is, all our students are so unique, right? Each and every single of them may be in a very different situation personally, you know, politically, like social for different kind of factors. So as career practitioners and helping professionals, I think it's really important for us to uh, remember that we don't have to have all the solutions. I know we all talk about this all the time, especially in this time, right? We don't have to have all the solutions. We don't have to know all the answers. It is our job to empower the students, right? The checklist that Sonia mentioned is that it could be a worksheet, you work with your student, simply ask them the question about how, how what do you know about this area, right? What What is the practice back home and what is the, this or that, right? Empower the student, helping them to build their self-efficacy regarding uh, getting engaged in the job search activity. Right here, I'm going to talk about some, briefly talk about some strategies for uh, rebuild home, uh, home country networks. First thing first, I think it's acknowledging that, you know, build realistic expectation on both parties, us, and also the student is, there might be some challenges regarding this uh, home job seeking back in the home country, right? 
uh, networking takes time and sometimes they got frustrated and there could be things here and there that happen. So building a realistic expectation. Some students may return to their you know, home, uh, home city or like hometown where they have a lot of existing connection they can utilize. Or some students may need to relocate to another location, even though it's the same country, it'd be very different culturally and things like that. So uh, build that realistic expectation, first step, right? And then uh, Sonia mentioned that, right, uh, getting familiar with recruiting practices and timeline. A lot of students do uh, normally prioritize looking for a job, international students looking for a job in the U.S. as their first priority and sometimes overlook you know, understanding about the timeline, recruiting practices, that form interviews back in your home country, which I think as career professional, it is our job to uh, help the student to keep that in mind, even if your first goal priority is to look for a job in the U.S., consider the context, preparing for returning to home, right, getting familiar with the timeline and recruiting practices is also important. And then the third one is talk about um, helping the student to identify some existing network resources, social capital they have back in their home country. This could look different for everybody. You know, sometimes introvert may have different challenges compared to extroverts, things like that. But really is uh, we can help the student to reflect on, you know, beyond their immediate family and close friends. Who else, you know, friends, family, families, friends, kind of tapping into this like existing network, uh, kind of expanding network. Think about how can they be creative in establishing more, you know, picking up previous connection, also establishing new ones. And the last one, but not the least, is really talk about as helping professional, how can we help students to, uh, you know, to manage this experience about reaching out back to home, you know, learning about all uh, this, um, you know, guidelines, regulations, best practices, how to look for jobs back home as to be there for them, help them to develop action plans to hold them accountable, and also maybe be there for them for emotional support as they go through some emotional, you know, frustration or sometimes they feel a little bit fatigued in this new process. So, and Elif is going to talk about uh, the holistic perspective of career and life development. Um, thank you so much. So um, I will just be taking the next four minutes or so. Uh, that's our timeline until we spend the last 10 minutes for the questions. So in the next three to four minutes, what I will try to do is to really try to put everything that we have mentioned so far. And my colleagues just mentioned some really practical and really strengths based action oriented strategies with you. Just some examples, of course, I will try to put them into this kind of proactive and holistic your development perspective. So for me, as a counselor educator as well, um, you know, when I try to teach my students about the, the career development and career counseling theories, I really always um, emphasize, prioritize the importance of the understanding of career development. Again, sometimes in our career counseling practice, we may rush into conversations about job search, very solution focused, outcome oriented conversations and work that we do. Uh, but we need to rethink and we need to become a lot more critical in terms of you know, how we approach our job with these students and the, the, the way that we work with them is really proactive and holistic enough. Um, sometimes uh, we might perceive I do career counseling or the work that I do is career coaching, career advising. So maybe it's really beyond my competencies or it's not really beyond the, the boundaries that I should hold to engage in these type of conversations. We should rethink about that, uh, especially in this current world um, we cannot just make assumptions that students will go and find other places to have those conversations. Even if they do, having those conversations as detached from conversations about the career planning and job search will not be in their best interest. So what I will try to do in here is that these two slides that we will see next, and this could be a whole other webinar itself, um, are just some reminders 
Uh, so think about what my colleagues talked about. How do we go through that checklist? And then how do we talk to students about that networking? When we do those work with them, we first need to make sure that students really understand the rationale, understand the importance of working on all those really uh, important items that they reviewed. And, and there are some, some points in here from the career development theories and in the references slides that you will receive later, you will see what theories and what models um, these messages, um, these items come from. First of all, the importance of embracing the uncertainty in the world. We already emphasized this, So, what, but what does this mean? This means that we need for students to have more self-awareness, cultural awareness, but we also need them to work proactively work on stable connections and support in a changing world. We can no longer promise them to find a career, to find a job that will provide that stability, that emotional support, um, that sense of family. A workplace may not look like that any longer in this world. Then they need to really proactively work on their sense of self and their sense of connections outside of the workplace. Uh, second, embracing the change and unpredictability. Based on everything that we have talked so far, we need to also help them understand the intersection of both risk and resilience factors. This requires us to maybe remind them their cultural transition when they first came to this country. They have already done this once and they can do this again when they are, when they are going back. But they need to remember the story. They need to remember that resilience that they develop, the strengths, the hope. Um, we also need to talk to them about the importance of self-advocacy and adaptability skills to cope with change. So they may be sometimes, uh, you know, against their culture or some family values. They will need to think about what self-advocacy means, adaptability means for them when they go back to a home country where some of the social, political, economic conditions might be pretty oppressive. They also need to be prepared for crisis and chaos, which means that sometimes we also need to incorporate the crisis management uh, in our work with international students. If you go to the next slide, we will see that the next two uh, items will talk about the importance of if you go to the next slide, the, the third point will talk about the importance of nurturing adaptability. Um, so again, all these things that we have mentioned so far, there is this voluntary going back, there is also this involuntary or maybe a crisis return. We have to acknowledge this and we want to encourage you to look into, for example, the career construction theory and the construct of career adaptability. How can we nourish this career concern, career control, curiosity, confidence uh, in increasing self-advocacy, talking to students about their perceptions of barriers. All these things will help us to proactively prepare them for that return, not waiting until the last year. Um, as we just talked in the networking slide before. And then with the involuntary crisis returns, like this current pandemic, if we are professionally trained in crisis management, in counseling, psychology, then we need to also incorporate managing crisis for safety, stability, connection. If we are not professionally trained in crisis management, uh, if we don't have professional counseling or related degrees, then we need to think about collaboration and having a plan, emergency plan in place, uh, a risk assessment plan in place to help students in crisis to make sure they are safe, they are stable, and they feel connected as they navigate the crisis, maybe suddenly returning home or not being able to come back to the United States for an uncertain time. Lastly, the importance of infusing hope and encouraging action. My colleagues are already also already talked about this and one thing that I want to highlight, and this comes from um, um, action, uh, hope centered, action oriented career development uh, framework that I highly encourage you to take a look at. It is talking about very similarly the importance of self awareness, work awareness, goal setting proactively, but then also action planning and incorporating adaptability. So we, we hope that you will be checking the, the references to learn more about these approaches, which can help you to again plan your work proactively and support the students holistically by integrating these very important constructs as you work with them to think about their career planning, to think about their career development. 
So this is kind of what we wanted to talk to you um, in general. So at this point, uh, we really hope that this kind of just glimpse of framework that we offered and some examples of resources that we offered, offered were helpful as a beginning step. We now want to open that up for some questions that you have. We will be very happy to answer those questions for you. Okay, so we are looking at the chat section. So you can share your questions with the chat, I believe. And if someone asked, will they be uh, able to get access to resources? Probably, I think she may be mentioning the, the resources you sh we showed today. Yes, the webinar is recorded and everybody will receive a link to the recording. And then um, if Quan, if you want to send me your PowerPoint as well, we can send that to them as well. Yes, and please remember, although it's not in the references, there's also our committee's resource guide on the NCDA website. You can also check that out. Speakers, we have another question. Our international students, our undergrad students do not have professional network in their home country. This is different to what graduate students often experience. What advice do you have for those undergrad students in those types of situations? So when they don't have any existing networks, connections. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, I can the, take this question because yes. um, yes. it, it, it's um, related to um, the charts mm -hmm. I was talking about. I um, used to work in the undergraduate office for three years. So I work with students from all different disciplines and um, they often come as like straight from their high school or even they went to high school in the US. So they have very limited professional experience back in their home country. Um, so there's two parts to that. I think like um, we already talked about alumni network is a great way for them to gain some insights of what is current, what is um, the hiring practice right now happening in their home country region, because things can change very drastically. Even their graduate student came to the US for six months, one year, there still um, could be a different landscape depending on um, what is the field that they're pursuing? And also, um, existing network could be a lot of things. Like when I was um, talking to, to Rose about this in, in our conversation, we talk about um, often thinking about their current connections, their, their friends from their country um, here in the US, they have their friends back home. So people know people. I think the important part of this job is to help students to explore any connections that they have, like people who know them, who know their skills, who they're connected with. Um, it could be through family members, it could through their um, ex like classmates or even their friends back home that you know, like they might, might be went to the same high school, but now in um, colleges back in their home country. So students have connections, but they may not think about it immediately. Um, I think one important thing to position them is to think about gathering these information first. Like they don't have to immediately think about a certain company CEO because they have to develop their network towards that goal, not just like um, getting like um, immediately contact with a professional in their field of desired. Yeah, and I will echo what Sonia said, this is Rose. So an important thing is to think about this, like this challenge to network is not just international students have it, right? A lot of our domestic client students who also experience this reluctance to like network. And it's, I think something that to consider is to be creative, but also supporting our student to reach out, actually developing a feasible, you know, action step to reach out to people, ask that question, hi, this is, this is my background, this is what I'm thinking. I'm looking for connections to talk to someone about this certain thing, right? Is to really take that first action step could be the most challenging thing for a lot of students. Uh, we have one minute left. You know, the, uh, the 
Yeah, I have the, uh, again, Union Park, you know, the, I have a question the, uh, for some of you. The, uh, you didn't tell about the specific job market, but we already know, you know, the many of our international students came from China. So the, do you have any ideas in what's going on in the job market in China for our the fresh graduate? So just briefly, yeah, because we have the, the one minute left. So Sani here from Brandeis University. I forget to introduce myself multiple times. Um, so as Eun Yang said, um, like, I think this is a very big question. It could be a separate webinar, <laughs> um, but the very brief thing is like, um, I think China right now is definitely ramping up their recruiting, um, even though the overall trend uh, wouldn't be the same as before, as like pre uh, pandemic, but there are definitely active recruiting happening right now. Uh, many of my, uh, my recent graduates are definitely doing job search. Um, so if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. Um, I'm sure uh, Rose have something to add as, add to that as well. Yeah, so agreeing with Sonia uh, recently, that's like, I think, encouraging the student to connect. What some of the, like I know Locking U has been, uh, GUCCU has been a member with a lot of university, have a lot of resources regarding the Chinese job market, which would be a nice resource to check out. And uh, very briefly, um, I think also beyond China, um, you know, this kind of goes with supporting career adaptability. World Economic Forum has recently released a report about jobs of tomorrow. So although it's not really country specific, it is talking about the, the emerging job market. It's talking about the skills that today's students and graduates should really be investing to make themselves more marketable uh, around the globe. So you may also want to take a look at that and then explore maybe what those specific industries and skills would look like in countries like China. Thank you. The uh, time's off. So some of the people asked some good questions on the Q&A. So uh, one person asked, you know, the, are you working with the international alumni group? So I know, you know, many of you are working with alumni groups. So, uh, if you are curious about their experience, please send email to us or our committee. Definitely, you are uh, will be very helped to share our the, uh, experience with the alumni groups back in home country or in the U.S. So the. Yeah. You can also send us a message with your questions in our LinkedIn group. So if you write your question on the LinkedIn, we can also share it from there, a response from there. Okay. So any other the, the final comment from the speakers? Thank you so much. We want to acknowledge we had almost 70 participants. So we really appreciate the time that you spent to better understand and support international students' experiences at this time. Thank you. And I would like to, this is Alicia with NCDA headquarters. I would like to say thank you again to all of our participants as well as all of our presenters today. And again, participants, the um, information from this webinar, the link to view the live webinar will be emailed to all of you uh, beginning of next week. So thank you all for being here today. And I hope everyone has a wonderful afternoon. Thank you, Alicia, for hosting this event for our committee. Absolutely. Thank you, guys. Thank you, everybody.